Hello. Welcome. Welcome back. Continuing to look at Godot. Some say Gato. I've never actually... I don't think anyone calls this engine Gato, but... There you go, though. And I, I don't know. <laughs> Instancing. Instancing in Godot, and in general, is creating something and then creating new things based on that thing. Previously, we discussed creating a scene and adding nodes and one scene with some nodes can work for a small project, but it becomes helpful to have more scenes as you go into higher levels of complexity, like a whole game. So this reminds you that they are in sort of tree structure, but you can also have two separate tree structures that have their two scenes that have their own root nodes and other nodes underneath them. You can also instance one scene into another scene making it part of that node structure. And this addition, this, um, this episode, whatever you want to call it, is mainly going to be going over that. So they have a prepared project for you to download to examine for this. I have already gone to the trouble of downloading it and unzipping it and moving it somewhere convenient. So we'll just wait for this to load. Oh yes, it wanted you to run it by doing import. To do that, you click import and then you browse for the project got the uh, project.godot file and then you double click that. It, as far as I can tell, it makes no difference how you load it up. Alright, so we've got a bunch of walls. As a reminder, scroll wheel by default zooms your view in and out and middle clicking or right clicking and dragging will move the entire view. And there you can change your what clicking and dragging and clicking and in general and right clicking and all that does by using the different modes up here. I'm not I'm not sure how to use all of them just yet. But it may go into that as we go along. I think a lot of them require you to drag around objects, and I don't want to drag these around and mess up the structure that they've made. I know what pan mode does. It allows you to move the view by clicking and dragging. So, we've got the scene loaded up. It's actually two scenes. There's the main scene, and there's one here. It is a ball. And they have their own uh, physics modes set. If you, well, you probably, statistically, you probably have not worked with Halo's Forge mode. Uh, but if you have, if you worked with it after Halo 3, where you could set physics modes to um, fixed, phased, or normal, it's a bit like that. Turns out they use stuff similar to that in real game development. Only here, it's, let's see, rigid body 2D. Whereas these are static body 2D. So these will not move. This is rigid. It does not flex. But it is able to move.
So we will instance it by using this button right here. We will go back to the main scene. Incidentally, if you notice a change in color, I decided to set the theme to alien because I like green. So yes, we will click this instance node, double click ball, and it will place it. Did it place it right there? No. Oh boy. Uh, let's turn snapping on. Uh, oh well. Oh right. That's something that I wanted to point out too. You want to make sure you have the root. It doesn't tell you this, but you want to make sure you have the root node selected or whichever node you actually want it under when you click instance, when you click the link icon to instance a thing. Because then it will actually put it under the main node or under wherever you actually want it. So now I'm going to drag this over here and click play or hit F5. We'll now see the fruits of our admittedly short labor. Yep, the ball drops, it bounces, it rolls. After a little while, it'll come to a stop. Now you can add more instances by going through that same pro process or by having the current instance selected and hitting Control D or Command D on Mac, as it says. And this threw me for a loop. It creates a new instance with the exact same location as the old instance. So you're going to want to drag it away from where it's at. You will see a new one coming off and the old one where it was. Let's put that one over there. It has a Nice illustration of having more. Oh, the thing to pause it. Dunk, dunk. Now, what you can do with instances alongside just creating them and using them that way you can make them independent. So, oh, I'm getting ahead of myself. Well, you this has sort of uh, smart or active instancing, so that you can change things about the ball scene itself, and it will change both of these without you having to go into them individually. That's really helpful if you had made like six of these, like this shows. So we'll go into this, and I will edit the trait that it says on here. And another thing it doesn't tell you, because this, I believe because this tutorial is old, is that to get to the bounce uh, property, you need to click here under physics where it says, and then click edit. And you can actually click on a text box that is made for a number like this and drag your mouse left and right and change the number which is something I've seen in um, music production software which is kind of cool but we're just going to click and set it to 1 and save, save. Hmm. alright when I did that before, it said that the changes may not save, and it told me to go ahead and save it. And you can, what you can do is save it as a a T-Res file here that you can then use for other things if you want too. 
if you want something else to have the same physics settings but it be a completely different object, you can save out those physics settings and then apply them as needed. So we're going to go back to the main scene, run it, and now, oh boy, they bounce a whole lot. That is actually the maximum bounce because it goes from zero to one. And it's going to take a long time for them to settle. They're not really going to settle from what I've seen. They're just going to end up kind of bouncing in place. Yeah, that one is settled into bouncing up and down. Now what you can do, along with making broad ranging changes, is make individual changes. You can adjust, say, this one, this first one. Click here, go to edit, change that back to zero. Save the scene. Run it. So it's been hot lately. It might rain today. I, I love the rain. And now we will see that, ooh, I did it wrong. Well, it's good to learn. Oh, yes, because by default, it takes you to this uh, ball.tres. What we want to do is click this, go to Make Unique. And that was something I found out the hard way and then forgot, because I did do this before. You want to click it, click Make Unique, then go, and we'll, instead of changing that one to zero, we'll change this one to one. All right, save. It's going to save when we run anyway, but now you'll see, if I go in here, edit, that one's zero. That one's one. Now, yep, you can see that one. Oh, just a little bit of bouncing. That one, lots of bouncing because they all, because one is now independent from the original instance, the original template. And that's it for this edition of looking at the basics of Godot, how to use it. Next time will be more about instancing. I hope to see you then.